All right, everyone, we're back with game two of this exciting Clash Bash match here. We saw row two, a game up versus Alex with a fantastic win out of Reinar, but that means he can no longer play Reinar in the way this format goes. Each player has two decks. Reinar has now one. Oh, sorry, wrong finger. Reinar has now one. <laughs> uh, so that deck can no longer be played. We can still see the Dromai again because the Dromai did lose. So let's check out what happens now in game two of this matchup. So here we go. Uh, the Reinar is greened out. He can no longer be played. There's an Azalea left on Rotu's side. There's still the Ira and the Dromai left on Alex's side. Uh, so we are jumping into Azalea versus Dromai. Interesting. This is a matchup that had a lot of development in Classic Constructed as to who was actually favored. I think uh, for the longest time, Dromai was his natural counter to Rangers, more so because of Lexi's presence and how that matchup could go for the Dromai, as we saw happen at Pro Tour Baltimore. Dromai uh, was a bit of a counter there. But then we saw Azalea's uptick once uh, Lexi was LL'd as the premier Ranger. And for some reason, Azalea's kept winning more than the Dromai's did, uh, at least when they were on display on camera, like we saw at Calling Taipei uh, with Justin Chu beating Nick Butcher in the finals, Azalea versus Dromai. So this is quite exciting to see now on the Clash level. Uh, with all this talking, I kind of missed some of the early plays here, but we did see Dominate come through that quickly to put Dromai on the back foot already at 14. They even uh, pitched into their Ironhide plate. They blocked from hand where they could, but they ended up with an Inertia and our six life down, which is just uh, some of the wild plays Azalea can get up to with Dominate, regardless of the format. Uh, you know, those pumps come in many rarities and the best ones aren't even necessarily at the Majestic level. Uh, the Majestic pump would be something like uh, Deadeye, which actually cost a resource. And a lot of the Azalea builds right now don't even run it. They're all on that zero cost base. So the Dromai's return here uh, well, it's decent damage out of the Dromai, that's for sure, but it's a little negative on uh, developing uh, uh, this kind of Ash state that we might have seen uh, if it was like a Glory Seeker type of type of turn. So there's no Ash on the Dromai side, absolutely none. And that Ember Moss Enopai dealt good damage. I mean, the Azalea is at nine already, but the Dromai now uh, is going to be a little bit starved for developing the board when she's got this monster hand that just wants to you know throw kyloria stick a miragai well you do need an ash to even start those plays so that's what we're looking for we were looking for something like this an oasis respite comes out not only preventing damage not only whittling dromai down to a one card hand which means you don't really care about the one action point from red and ledger anyway you've only got one card but you're also creating that ash critically and this was a really smart use out of glory seeker as well you don't want to arsenal that blue sweeping blow so even though you look at Glory Seeker and you assume this is something that's there to generate Ash. I can pitch three reds into. We saw beautiful play out of it just then to make sure that the arsenal is better than this one cost, one attack go again, which is just not something you want to play out at all and something that would have gotten zero mileage in arsenal uh, unless, you know, it just got cycled away due to an inertia trap or something. So really love to see that. I'm, I'm quite eager to find out what the drum might even put in arsenal because that's just going to really tell us uh, how useful that play was. We see an Azalea now go too wide on this turn, uh, not presenting lethal uh, because they'd opted to clear the dragon instead and now send the Withering Shot face. So Withering Shot, uh, you know, frailty in general is something that is not too good against Dromai specifically. And it was something that even I wondered, could frailty have applied to allies and have it be a bit more balancing for this matchup? But at the end of the day, it only affects weapons and cards from Arsenal, attacks from Arsenal rather, uh, which Dromai is rarely doing. So sure enough, like we see this slam of a Miragai turn that's now recycling that Ash because there was already that Ash present. And then a Ravenous Rabble just for good damage because Azalea is all the way down to two already. And there's Arcane damage in this deck. Don't forget, Dromai can sling Arcane off of Burn Them All. Actually, she can't do that. That's not a Dromai spec and it's a Majestic not available in Clash. But Azvalai, we saw one Azvalai played, so it's not necessarily guaranteed game over at some point because that second Azvalai might get cleared at some point. But now every breakpoint, every time one damage is threatened to be leaked over the Azalea, you got to consider, I'm just dead to that Azvalai now. Uh, so the Azalea doesn't look like she's got easy access to uh, presenting lethal here. I mean, obviously this will be some kind of Snapdragon's push, but even so, an, a blue infecting shot is not the right start to presenting an overwhelming amount of threat this turn to kind of stem what the, the Dromai is doing. Because at minimum, 
uh, the Maragai should be able to be used as a beater here and just present lethal off of two. There's no armor block. It will take a card no matter what. Uh, and now with a perfect block on this infecting shot, we're not even looking at blood rot damage. So uh, sure enough, I think, yeah, it's always the Snapdragons here. You got to do something a little more. But one of the things about Clash, right? It's not always worst case. Sometimes you look at Azalea in those situations, like, oh, groaning, this is going to be Snapdragons into a pump into Codex. This looks awful, but it is Clash. You can't run those Majestics. And so while the follow-ups can be nasty, I mean, look at this, red infecting shot, absolutely disgusting. It is not worst case, not worst case. Uh, and with a second defense reaction here, whew, it's not going to be lethal presented by those blood rot boxes. Lucky for the Dromai, uh, two defense reactions there shored up that... Uh, two extra damage was not leaked over the course of this turn, whereas if those are just three blocks, we'd be looking at a different story. So the Dunebreaker Senapai into the Mirai pulling three cards out of the Azalea. Azalea now only looking at Arsenal plus card, but Death Dealer lets you draw a card, in theory. Plus, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if it's some dominated effect, then like that just would have been game regardless. But the Blind Azalea only swaps into a Blue Spire Sniping which is just, just tragic. Uh, if this was a different sequence, right? If that was a pump from hand into an Azalea swap into a zero-cost arrow, then the game would be wildly different. So over to the Dromai again to easily present lethal with this first attack into these ones, not presenting lethal. Well, now they are. Uh, Azalea took the first one. But that puts the Azalea in a terrible spot, having to face Azvlai coming up these... Uh, AZs are going to meet and well Azalea doesn't even get to clear a dragon looks like that was just an arrow uh, and now we see the overwhelming effect of a board state like this just being impossible to block out uh, with all the breakpoints especially on a deck that's low on poppers but Clash is a format with sideboard slots and it doesn't look like Azalea brought in any uh, sixes so kind of interesting but that does put us at one and one so for the match point we get to see Ira versus Azalea. That's right. Ira versus Azalea. The Azalea will be able to be played again. It didn't win. And then we're going to see Ira, which we have not seen at all on Alex's side. I know Ira is very, very strong in this format, along with uh, Icelander. Oh my goodness, those decks are just value machines. So, and hey, if you want to see more of me, of course, I have the Mansant YouTube channel and I do most of the streaming now for LSS. So any of these big events, you will probably see me involved in some capacity. Have a good one and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.